Good evening, good day, good morrow to you, my friends around the world. It is the day of the apocalypse eclipse. Did we survive? You'll have to wait to find out right here where you get the only news you need to know. This is the Paranormal 60 News. Welcome, my little darklings. Thank you so much for joining us here. At least I hope you've joined us here. Hopefully, the eclipse that took place today did not suck you into a vacuous state somewhere in between here and the nether realm. Hopefully, you're still with us, and we'll only find out soon enough if my fellow compatriots were able to join us. But I do want to welcome to the Paranormal 60 Network, the brand new program. And if you are a subscriber to the audio podcast, you got to hear it on Sunday, 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 Sunday. And if you were watching right here on the Paranormal 60 YouTube channel, it debuted this past Saturday. It is Mysteries, Mayhem, and Merlot, the podcast with Winnie Schrader. That is now part of our network, part of our shows. So you get five days of the strange and the supernatural. And then we go into mysteries, mayhem and Merlot, the podcast, which you can now see on this paranormal network, or you can go find mysteries, mayhem and Merlot on her very own YouTube channel as well. I also want to thank everybody that's gone out and got their hands on my package. The book bundle is doing amazing and we are selling through quickly. If you'd like to get your hands on my package, all you have to do is go check out Paranormal60.com. That's Paranormal60.com, and you'll find my book package there. The Other Side, A Teen's Guide to Ghost Hunting and the Paranormal, and my brand new book, Theater of the Mind, Tales from the Darkness. You can get both books together, save on shipping, and save on price by getting your hands on my package right now. And I know somewhere... Somewhere probably up above watching us and smiling down as sweet tea now saying, oh, Dave, don't keep calling it that, but it works. People buy it that way. So I'm going to keep saying it. We miss you, sweet tea, wherever you are. Ladies and gentlemen, the paranormal retired detective is with us. Ladies and gentlemen, Gregory H. Lawson, Esquire. Hi, Greg. Hey, Dave. How are you doing? I'm doing well, my friend. How are you? I'm doing pretty well. I'm about uh, an hour ahead of you. <laughs> oh, and I see I'm you're right you're you're on. going lightweight tonight. I've got my full oh, decanter yeah. of uh, screwball whiskey with a little uh, little a little bit of that mixture that you told me about with the Dr Pepper raspberry. Delicious, oh, yeah. my friend. Well, I was just drinking Dr Pepper and then making a sound with your tongue. <laughs> what? I don't know. Yeah, but, obviously. You know, uh, a friend of mine. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Named Wes Pretty. I used to work for. He was my major and my lieutenant. He gave me this bottle as and a parting it. gift. Yeah, yeah. Hand selected. Very nice. Oh, very sharp. I'm gonna put a dent in it. Well, let's see. Let's see what we're able to connect with. We've, you know, with satellites going out all day, internet network problems. You know, dogs and cats living together. It's been Ooh. a hectic day with the eclipse. We don't know what we're gonna find. Let's see if we, ladies and gentlemen. Chachi. Nope, the uplink must not be working. Yeah. Well, at least there's one guy we know we can count on. America's greatest hero is going to join us right now, ladies and gentlemen, the Colonel. Not here mm. either. Huh? Yeah. God, do you think they were swallowed up by the the locust? I think it's a locust. It's a giant locust. <laughs> Locusts? Maybe. Yeah, I think so. All right. Well, then say it with me. Board? Say it with me, Greg. We only have one last chance to bring somebody okay. on board right, here. Right, right, right. Right, mecca lick a high, mecca hiney ho. Mecca lick a high, mecca sweet tea ho. Ooh. What in the world? Yeah, I'm going to regret that. I already know it. Ladies and gentlemen, sweet tea. All the way from Vegas. Yeah, look at that. How do my introductions get worse every week? Look at you. You're welcome. You're Do you have welcome. any clothes on in that picture back there? No. 
Am I dead? Is that why you were trying to summon me earlier? Well, look how ethereal and heaven-like it is behind you. I would only assume that we were reaching you. have nothing to do with this. Oh, nice, Greg. Real nice. All right, let's talk about this. This was all the hubbub, and uh, the, the people from around the world are tuning in right now to find out if we survived the eclipse, the solar eclipse. Have you guys seen this high definition photograph they've got floating around on the interwebs? Nope. nope. That is a go- that's an actual photograph that they took with a high definition it, camera. It looks like Uranus. Uh well, I wish you wouldn't talk oh. about my personal life, but thank you oh, anyway. No, I meant uh, the planet. A, oh, does oh, it? Dear. That's a problem. Oh. Yeah. It's a beautiful know, photograph. It. The world was out in droves watching the eclipse. I forgot about it. I was sitting in line <laughs> to pick my son up from school and my friend Misty Bay calls and she goes, oh, Schrader, it's gorgeous. It's so gorgeous. It's, oh my God, it's full right now. I'm like, what are we talking about? What, 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 are, you, what are you referring to? And she said, the eclipse. And I was sitting in my car in Minnesota, pulling up to my son's school as I watched droves of children coming out with cardboard glasses, probably not even the right ones. <laughs> at the sky and there was no sun there was no moon for we are in the the land of magic and mystique we are in the land of minnesota where all we had were gray clouds and at no point did it get dark Mm. at all so as far as i'm concerned the rest of the world's full of bs and there was no Mm -hmm. eclipse today can either one of you prove me wrong on that nope i was waiting outside and it was boring Mm. i got photos it got dark did it yeah Yeah, okay good story I got, I get, I got, I got, I got, <laughs> okay. I got to say, he did warn us. He said he's been he's, drinking for an hour oh, before he got God. on the air. So we were sitting out there and everybody says, it's going to get dark. It's going to get dark. You know, the birds will start or stop chirping or whatever. And I was like, whatever. It got dark, man. It really? did get dark. Yeah. It was creepy. It was weird. Wait, you mean when the sun is not able to just shine in the sky freely, it gets no, dark? Greg? Stuff reflects off of other things. I call you a liar. I can't believe it. No, it it didn't get dark here at all. What was all the, Greg, I know you've been following this. And obviously there's a lot of mysticism that follows the the moon and the sun. And why was this solar eclipse so devastating for some people? They were, the people were talking like end of the world apocalyptic thoughts and that things were going to go horribly wrong, Greg. Why, why this eclipse? Well, every eclipse, a little bit of that comes out. Usually the fringe. Greg, Greg, why this eclipse? That was the question. I don't know. Uh, uh, The media ran this hard uh, and it's, and it's coming a pretty across the United States. Yes. The media was running it really hard. Like, Mm. Uh, well, in Texas, let's put it this way, uh, where I used to work, they activated the uh, uh, emergency operations center. So for three minutes? Were, no, fire it up, day. boys! The eclipse is on. That and that and that's that that fear mongering thing. The whole day they did because they were afraid there would be fires from people pulling over on the side of the road. There's so many people. Yeah, it's real dry down here, and you pull over the on the side of the road and stand there and look at the eclipse. While your catalytic converter is still hot, it catches things on fire. So there's a legit thing about that. But why? Yes. I have a question. Yep. Yep. Question from the delegate from Minnesota. Um, how many people's catalytic converters are laying on the ground <laughs> in the brush? I'm curious. Good question. Well, the, what, what do you mean? The, the okay. grass grows high and you pull off into the grass and the grass is touching a 1500 oh. degree okay. catalytic converter. In Minnesota, we get no grass because we get no sunlight. It's just, gray and snowy well, it's, maybe it's e- eclipse all year long or it is pretty much yeah everything's eclipsed by the clouds and the snow we are expecting to have 78 degree weather on this sunday so summer will be here for 24 hour period mm-hmm. and then we're back into the doldrums of fall but um mm, blizzard they really put in like emergency networks ready for what could go wrong Oh, absolutely. Yeah. There, there was a whole bunch of stuff going on with fire EMS and all law enforcement, uh, and to activate the, you know, the, the emergency center, that's a huge deal. Um, and the people that they call in to man, all that stuff, it was a big, it was a big ticket today for, for government. And was any of that stuff actually used? No, of course not. Yeah. 
That's no, I think the only ones that really suffered were the werewolves, right? Because <gasps> I hear it takes a good four, four and a half minutes for a full transformation. Yeah. And you only had it for like three minutes. And oh, then they're like, ah, son. Yeah. So mm -hmm. it didn't go well for werewolves today. That's too bad. So, hey, werewolves, you're in our hearts. All right. Wow. All right. Hmm. We hope you heal Are quickly. I, in my heart yeah uh so that's uh that's it so the the eclipse happened nothing i kind of scan the news and by scan the news i mean i listened to uh alexa and i said alexa any any bad news due to the eclipse mm -hmm. and uh, alexa said uh get off your fat ass and read for yourself i'm tired of having to be your delivery wow. service wow that's aggressive it's not my I don't know. I, sh I should just stop calling my wife Alexa because she does not yeah. apparently like it. No. Um, but there was no bad news. I, I found nothing, name. nothing that relates to any kind of or, major tragedies. That took you know place. why? Because your saviors with the government stepped up, manned everything and made sure nothing happened. Mm -hmm. Or did everything mm -hmm. end and we're all in purgatory right now. Well, you need to ask uh, your local news. Yeah, I don't think so. Don't ask my wife and call her Alexa. She will not answer. And when wow. she does, she's very grumpy. I would All right. That. Let us uh, let us take a, a few steps into a different realm here, if you don't mind. Recently, I was a guest on Coast to Coast AM with George Knapp. And it's weird because, right, for years I was a host on Coast to Coast AM. And it's so strange when I get to step back in in the guest role position and uh Sadly, the last time I was there was in 2022. Ian Punnett hosted and brought me on the show. And uh, we've since lost Ian. Just an amazing man. This is my first chance to get back on Coast to Coast since Ian's passing. And I'd never worked with George Knapp in all these years. And it was a delight. And I had a great time and a great conversation with George. Tons of emails afterwards from listeners all across the United States saying, when are you going to replace George Norrie? And I said... George Knapp and I are working on it. And uh, no, that's not true. <laughs> the eclipse, the eclipse. I blame the news on the eclipse. My brain is still affected by it. Uh, but no, it, just hundreds of emails, very kind comments about this. Are you going to read them all right now? I am because we know oh. Greg loves emails. No, but I did oh. get one email. And this is oh. no offense to all the rest of the people that sent the emails. There were other cool stories. This one kind of tripped my trigger for many different reasons. And I said, listen, usually when we do the news, it's strictly, we're hard edge. We're very good news source here. We mm. are the place you come to mm. when you're bored and there's nothing else to yeah, do. So there it is. Uh, here's what I'd like is, would you join us on a news episode? Because I want you to share the story, not just with our listeners, but with two of my closest friends. And then of course they didn't show up, but oh. Sweet T and Greg are here. So she was kind enough to I carve out a little room in. for and uh, Dr. Therese Locks joins us right now. Dr. Locks, welcome to the show. Hey, thanks for having me. I'm so excited to be here with all of you. Well, welcome. thank you very much. It was a pleasure having you too. All right. That was <laughs> great. Oh, that was, that was super good. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it. that's, that's nice. That's Greg's favorite story. Quickly. <laughs> so I get this remarkable email and uh, this, this story kind of unfolds. And it's one of those head scratchers where at first I'm like, because uh, let's be honest, the coast audience, you never know exactly what you're going to get. And sometimes I feel like I'm being baited. And in this case, I was like, this is, first of all, it was well-written and in paragraph form. So I knew, <laughs> oh, hmm. I knew either chat GPT With was punctuation, involved. everything, yeah, punctuation, real wow. punctuation too. Not just like emojis. She wrote in full <laughs> sentences and constructs. Yeah but had an amazing story to share. And as you know, one of my very first uh, kind of inlets to the paranormal was the fact that my, my aunt received a phone call from my grandmother after she passed. And I have been fascinated. D. Scott Rogo wrote an entire book about phone calls from the dead. Uh, Cal Cooper wrote a book about phone calls from the dead. And then there's been this other uh, branch of, of news that keep, kind of comes out from time to time where we hear that spirits seem to be able to manipulate our technology. As a matter of fact, there was a train derailment, I want to say about 10 years ago, and it was a brutal trail derailment. So many people killed and brutally injured. And this woman kept getting a phone call from her husband's phone. And that helped them find where the husband was. He was killed on impact. And oh the phone, God. the phone was dead. 
but it had somehow kept calling her and, and trying to get through to her very strange story. And I thought these technological stories are really fascinating to me. And then, then Dr. Therese locks goes, pulls the pin and just drops a grenade in my lap with the email she sends over to me about her story. And this is crazy stuff. All right, Dr. Locks. first of all, have you grown up just kind of surrounded with the, with the supernatural and paranormal, or is this all kind of more a new thing for you? you? You know, this is kind of more of a new thing to me. I did not grow up with, in a haunted house or uh, with anyone uh, supernatural. It wasn't until, you know, later in my life when I connected with my wife, Laura, that, you know, uh, she had some special gifts, but. Uh, but other than that, nothing that had that, ever really kind no. of. And uh, your father, talk to me a little bit about the relationship you had with your father and uh, where you grew up and, and that kind of influence. So I'm originally from Omaha, Nebraska. <gasps> uh, and uh, oh, oh, are you really? Oh. Yeah. <laughs> I never hear that. I saw, I got excited. Oh, okay. It's like being from Minnesota, hey? <laughs> right? Weird. Who does that? I don't know. So I'm not there anymore. Well, only a lot more flat and a lot more corn from my understanding. So. <laughs> mm -hmm. In the, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so anyway, uh, uh, my father passed away when I was two. And uh, so that left uh, my mom and my two siblings and myself. And I was so mad at my dad for most of my life because uh, he, he took the easy road out and died to leave everybody. Mm -hmm. And then we were stuck with my mom who wasn't mother of the year, you mm -hmm. know, but everyone does their best with what they have. But it's like, I hated how he did that. And it, it was uh, quite a challenge to actually have all this messaging from text start because I'm like, Oh my, I, I don't like this guy. I have a lot of anger for him. And what's he doing now trying to make up to me? What is this? You know, right like now, that but, but let's step this out. Your father passes away in what year? 1961. So repeat that for us, would you? 1961. 1961. So, yeah, it's been a while. Yeah, it's been a day or two. <laughs> 1961 and the advent of texting. Yes. Yes. He, you know, and at no time in our experience, did he ever call it a mobile phone? Okay. He always called it a device or an instrument. Oh, that's interesting. interesting. Yeah. I thought so too, but. Uh, All right. So now to catch yeah. people up, uh, when, when do these messages begin appearing for you? In April of 2015, it was right after uh, my wife had been diagnosed with uh, breast cancer and she had a double mastectomy and she had been home from the hospital, oh, maybe a week and uh, was, you know, sleeping a lot. Obviously, it's quite a recovery process. And I'm in the kitchen one day cleaning of all things because I'm so bad at that. But that's what I was doing. She was napping and I got it. I heard my phone ding, you know, how you get a ding from a text like ding. And I picked it up and I saw this text. And I'm like, this is really weird, you know, because it came from Laura's phone and I knew she was sleeping. And so I went into the bedroom and I looked in there and it's like, she's totally out. And, you know, her phone's on the nightstand and I go in there and I'm like, well, I can't just, I can't wake her up. That'd be terrible. Um, so I thought, well, I'm just going to stand here quietly for a while. You know, like a kid would do when you want to wake somebody up, you know, you just kind of <laughs> stare at them and, you know, they're going to eventually wake up. I think snipers learn that as a matter of fact, where they're <laughs> trained to look away because they can feel, you can feel it when someone's staring at them. So I'm staring at her and like, of course she, she comes awake and goes, what, what are you doing? And I said, did you send this text? And she goes, you know, like I'm the stupidest person in the world. Like, you know, I'm, I'm sleeping. <laughs> Just woke me up. I'm sleeping though, you know? And she goes, what is it? And I read it out loud to her and she's looking at me and I'm looking at her and we're like, this is the strangest thing ever because she knows as well as I do that, like he died a long time ago. And right. then this text was just so weird. 
in terms of what even what sense does this make? My name is misspelled. And do you want me to read this out loud? Are we okay just on the screen? Well, let, no, I want to read it for our audio listeners only. The actual oh, text okay. came through that said, Therese, this is your father. Be brave. Don't falter. Laura is too weak physically, but strong psychically. Lean on each other's strengths. Let her guide your choices. Be her strength. You are two sides of the same coin. She is all heart into it. No strength. You are all strength, little into it. Join. She's in meditation. Wait 23 minutes to tattle on me if you must. And that was dated April 23rd, 2015. So, all right. You get this text. Now, did you go over and look at your wife's phone to see if there was a text sent from her phone? Yeah, it was sent from her phone. Okay. Now, there is a very famous person in the field of, of uh, the paranormal who was known as the sleeping prophet. And he uh, would gain a lot of information and insight in, in these meditative and napping stances. Do you know who I'm talking about, Greg? There's a special prize in it if you do. Microphone on, buddy. Let's try try talking with the mic on. Yeah. Yeah, I, I said it. So <laughs> <Where'd> I <win? laughs> and your microphone I was off. And you you forgot know, once you oh, oh did you forget already once you said it? Is that what happened? Well, so you don't know the answer. Know. Uh yeah. how about you, sweet tea? Are you familiar? Is oh, it like not. from the 1800s or 1900s? Like or early? 20-hundreds, maybe? Or <laughs> maybe the Is it from hundreds? time that has existed already? Is it a, it, oh, wait. <laughs> is it a human? Okay. Oh, good um, question. This is just, <laughs> oh, God. Doctor, you can see what I have to work with here. Listen, uh, you know do, you, do you know who the uh, sleeping prophet was? Is it my turn now? Yeah, Dr. Oh, okay. <laughs> Price is right rules. That's yeah. okay. I'll take a sleeping prophet for 500, please. Uh, uh, right. Uh, and who was the sleeping uh, prophet? Okay. Let's see. Uh, I'm going to guess uh, Edgar Casey. Edgar Casey is correct. Laura <laughs> <laughs> also knew that. I'm I surprised that one of my it. cheating cohorts didn't just go look at the answers <laughs> from our listeners. But right. We've both so got the, whiskey to drink. <laughs> All right. I'm sorry. We're in, in story time. I understand. So, uh, she says, or the, the spirit, your father says, uh, she's in meditation right now. Wait 23 minutes to tattle on me if you must. So was he, do you think he was informing you, give her 23 minutes more to sleep before you go in there and disturb her? You know, I thought about that, but I did it anyway. I'm sorry. Oh, of course. He could <laughs> tell you were going wait? to. <laughs> it's no. 23 minutes. I know. Yeah. It's like, I got to figure this out right now. Right. I mean, when you, <laughs> sweet tea, if I, I were to die tomorrow and like 20 years from now, you start getting texts from Greg's phone that says it's for me. Why you're am I hanging answer. out with Greg in 20 years? <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll be there. people together. I'm sure. So uh, will I. Oh my God. What a dark, dark crew I've got. Um, so like I, don't, I understand wanting to know and, and take that place. Do you think. But it because, says 23 minutes. Because your father said and he's coming through her and saying she's very psychically connected she's in meditation to me that almost sounds like he was channeling through her and without her realizing he texted you the message that he was putting through her as opposed to just ghostly fingers hunting right. and pecking on your screen and sending that message yeah. up is, is that where you believe this was coming from Definitely. Uh, you know, later, as we go down the road, uh, he mentioned the way he had access to her phone mm -hmm. was she granted permission. And we talk about this all the time. It's like, he says you gave him permission to use your phone. She'd be like, I didn't give her permission. I didn't talk to him. I didn't say anything. But at some level, when you're sleeping in that, you know, semi-unconscious state, you know, you're in another place. And Others can come visit and talk to you and make a deal, I guess. But he also included the answer of all this is from love. It's like that combination of her being gifted and giving permission and him finding a way to put this together and having the love to make this happen was his secret formula. So you get that first message. How long till you hear from your father again? 
like a month. A month. And month. What's, what's the setting at this point when this message comes through? Uh, at this point, it was just, I think we were in a car. Uh, because like from that first text to the second, we'd be talking like, uh, you know, what is this? What do you think this is? Who's doing this? You know, because I teach computer science. I know a thing or two and I'm a bossy Betty. I can like figure things out. Whoa. And it's like, I can't Language. figure this out. Who would have, <laughs> who would, who would have? Posse Betty's my rapper name, Sweet Tea. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Uh -huh. But she spells it B <laughs> and then that little colon SSI, Betty. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so, we'll have to rap battle so, sometime. So, yeah. <laughs> so we were looking at it from a perspective of, I was looking at it from how does the technology work? I know how that works. <laughs> and we're just trying to figure out how this is happening. So like a month goes by and we still haven't figured anything out. And here comes the, the next one. And this from dad. Now, does it say from dad? It does. All of okay. this is like, you know, if the first one said, this is your father, you know, this next one is from dad. Every text he sent uh, would always say, this is your father. Or, you know, this is your dad. Just in case, you know, you're wondering who. Who's right? It's like, how many people can do this? How many entities can do this? Maybe there's a lot. Yeah. I like, I like to think this is not a unique story. Uh, well, so far it is. So this yeah. next text comes in on May 21st, 2015 from dad, you and Laura are my dear children. Thank you for your kindness to her fragile heart and body. She has a lioness soul, but an unshipworthy container. I'm sorry. That is just such a weird statement. I'm so proud of your efforts in this difficult venture. You have done the world a great service with your dedication to children. I love you, Mary Esther and Frederica very much. Say the prayer to St. Christopher before bed. He will help us connect in a more personal way. My apologies to Lori for hijacking her instrument. And again, that comes from May 21st, 2015. Mary Esther and Frederica are your sisters, correct? Correct. Okay. So now this message becomes even more personal by not only addressing you and your wife, but addressing your two siblings. Right. And if someone's hacking your phone, how do they have this information? What's their motivation? What would they care? It's like it, it, none of it made sense. And so like the more text versations, you know, text and conversation we received from him, it I was like, like I know it's like cool, yeah. isn't it? It's but like now, what it was, is. Was your wife in the car next to you when you got this second yes. message? Yes. And so we'd be together and like we would hear her phone go whoosh, you know, that sound. Like it was and then, sending it. Yes. And mine would go ding. Could you do that again? <laughs> ding. Thank you. That's wow. my new ringtone, by the way. Uh, <laughs> oh, you get that sound, ding. So this time, it's not the sleeping prophet. It's the driving prophet, right? She's not even aware that this is taking place, but you hear the noise and you get this secondary message. What is it like right. then? What, what? How do the two of you wrap your head around this moment? Obviously, very intelligent people. You've got a DR in front of your name. Yeah, well, you know, it's like it took a long it, you know, sometimes I look back at it or talk to other folks and they're like, um, you know, how long did it take you to reply to him? And I'm like, well, you know, it it took a long time because it took us a while to figure out what was going on. And do you think it's really him? And if it is, if we reply, you know, what would we say, you know? And, and so uh, it was kind of a strange thing to try to put together. It took some time to wrap around it. And it's coming it. from your wife's phone number. So you're like, well, she's right. just going to get it. Who Like, he's not going to get it. I mean, that, right. that would be my thinking anyway. So, And at no point did you text back, love you, dad, miss you. This is just two messages. And you're like, you're like, this is a telemarketer. We're not going to respond. Yeah. I don't need another set of Ginzu knives. <laughs> don't. Do They're it. really don't. good though. They're really? really? Good. Do they stay sharp? Yeah, they do. Oh, and they come with the new Paranormal 60 Big Dumb Cup. <laughs> oh, great. <laughs> great. So, so, all right. So you guys now have got the second message. Do you tell your sisters about oh, this? Are you kidding me? It's like, 
I'm still in Nebraska at the time. And if you, uh, if you talk, we, we wondered all the time, who could we talk to about this? This is, you know, you oh can't, you know, you go to the grocery store and you see your neighbor and say, how's it going? You say, Hey, it's going great. Just reconnect with my dad. You know, that one that passed away, you know, when I was two <laughs> and I've been angry about it ever since that one, we're all good. You know, it's like, yeah, they would totally be cool with it. And yeah. I think that's totally fine and nice and great. They could right. be yeah. judgmental at all. No, not at fine. all. I would not have my house toilet papered or no, egged up. No. Or burned down. It's fine. <laughs> oh, yeah. Burning. Girl, <laughs> did you, so you didn't tell the sisters either? No. <laughs> now, wait. Was They're, that because I'm, of the rivalry? Or are you kind of like, if he wants to reach out to them, he knows their number? <laughs> well, you know, <laughs> uh, we're having so much fun. This is awesome. Um, you know, it's one of those things where I thought, I couldn't, I didn't know if they'd be good about it or, or uh, I didn't know how they'd respond. I wasn't sure. Mm -hmm. And so that was another decision I got stuck in, in terms of what do I do about that? You know? Yeah. Thanks. It's not exactly, not exactly Sophie's choice there, doctor. <laughs> I mean, have you <laughs> been to Nebraska? It kind of <laughs> is. I guess so. <laughs> That's, I guess. Hey, Hey, I have to defend it because it is a beautiful, <laughs> beautiful land. And uh, oh. it does have that brutal winter factor like Minnesota, which totally is not uh, fun at all. But mm -mm. Midwest. yeah, but very, uh, very red state. And uh, how how long now till the third message arrives? Uh, it was about another month. Okay. Yeah. And can and, you set the stage for us there? What's going on at this point? Oh, I've got a new job. So I had been uh, teaching high school and then I was at a point where I could take uh, what they call early retirement mm -hmm. and, and then go work for another organization. <laughs> and, and so I Talk did. About I early retirement. <laughs> yeah. Okay. And it, it was a place I wanted to work with and it was in line with what I wanted to do. And I was still working with kids and adults too. And uh, uh, it, it was wonderful. And so, uh, he sent this, uh, actually I was at work <laughs> and I'm like, Oh my God, I'm in like my new employee meeting. And here's a message. It was like one in the afternoon. And I forgot to put the date and time on this one, but that's, you know, this one was interesting too. Therese, it's father salutations and congratulations on your new endeavor. Marcus Aurelius can guide you with meditations. Remember that you must regard the universe as one living being. All things have reference to this. We are all connected, both good and bad, weak and strong. I'm so enjoying House of Cards, too. Remember that your new job has the <laughs> Sorry. What? Her dad's a big fan of Kevin Spacey over there. <laughs> I guess. Um, you know, pr prior to the bad news coming out about yeah, him. Yeah, of course. Yeah. <laughs> all things have reference to this. We are all connected, both good and bad, weak and strong. I am so enjoying House of Cards, too. Remember <laughs> that your new job has the potential to hurt your marriage. Guard against oh. that always. You promise to protect Lori in this life, and you protect her by avoiding unworthy souls who would enjoy seeing her hurt. Lori is a woman of valor as you are. All of my children are strong, good souls. She promised to teach your soul the power of gentleness, and you promised to protect her. Do your job, and all will be well. All right. So, so how I do, do you have to feel ask about you, him liking your wife more than you. Like he is what? loves your wife so much. <laughs> yeah. Like and, and the messages me are coming from the wife's phone. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my I'm, God. I'm going to throw this out there, doctor. I am by no means a computer scientist, a genius, or a doctor, but I do no, know that there is a company that you can send a text to to send texts at another time from your number. And those things do take place. And these two sound like, hey, stop being an asshole to your wife. And you really think your about wife is amazing. On the way home. It really kind of sounds like maybe your wife's consciousness or $5.99 paid to somebody else to resend that message might have happened. I don't want to poo-poo your story. It's a beautiful story. And I'm glad your dad's coming through. But first of all, did he really speak? salutations and congratulations on your new endeavor yes this this is the honest to god the text the way it came through no but i mean it, is that the way he spoke in oh, life i wouldn't know like i wouldn't know he died when i, I was two but nobody but, else talks about it mom's like 
Oh, oh, your father was so elegant in the way he spoke here in Omaha. He always said salutations. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, you know, it's like uh, he was from a different time because right. He... But that's what I'm saying. Is it that language? Because those are very fancy oh, etiquette. Right. And you know, he was educated. He was a lawyer who was in business, and mm. um, so he he's did. A great, he's he a was... lawyer. Who was in business? <laughs> well, you know, like uh, outside, you know, you know, lawyers, you know, yeah. practiced, practiced lawyers. law and had a focus in business. I, Good. <laughs> so, right. so he was well spoken. This very well right. could be right. his intonations. The language I, of his last earth life. Most my definitely. favorite part is like, hey, you can get help on this from Marcus Aurelius. Right. By the way, House of Cards. <laughs> don't don't let but, your Netflix subscriptions. <laughs> but let me ex time. and you got to remember this was way before the Kevin Spacey of ordeal. Course. Oh right, but yeah. What this was, you know, since you know Laura uh, just had surgery, we'd be, you know, we didn't go out much. You know, she was mm -hmm. she was kind of sick, and so we were watching House of Cards. You know, oh, so he's watching it with you. He's watching it. They're they're like here with us all the time. Oh yeah, hundred percent. All the time, and like when we read, we saw that we're like, he's watching TV with us. He's probably sitting on the couch. You know, we we joke about it later. Like, what do you want to watch? You know, he liked House of Cards. He liked pizza. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, if he had a mouse, he might be able to <laughs> to eat it. No, no mouse, but thumbs. He's no able to text really well. It's, uh, it's your energy. It's good to know on the other side, I can still work a Pez dispenser at least. That's going <laughs> to get me by. All right. So then, Pez. so then the fourth message comes along. And by this time, have you responded to any of the text messages? No, it wasn't until. Are after you speaking out one. loud to them? Do you, do you say, Dad, I got the message? Or I mean, right. are, are, we, yeah, okay. that's, and that's kind of the, uh, one of the interesting parts too, because we would, Laura and I would be talking to each other. And the next thing, you know, we'd be getting a text with him answering what we were talking about or commenting. And it's like, they were just here all the time. And at one point he, uh, he, he told Laura, uh, and it's kind of weird the way he do it. It's like, he'd say, uh, please tell Laura, I respect her privacy and only come when she bid and you know back to the language thing and she'd be like does he not know this is my phone and i can see this you know i can <laughs> see this too but he was very respectful of you know trying to have boundaries i guess in terms of using her device but not getting into her business without her permission and right. she did give him permission to use the phone is what he said so. right right so yeah I'm with and, you. Uh, all right so how how long again till our fourth message rolls in uh, like a month. Wow. So it's like once a month, he's spreading these things out. He's yeah. waiting until he has enough to say to make it worth his time to text and message you. Right. And it was like. So it's know, not it was like my of... kids who like, oh, dad, can you pick up uh, some ice cream on the way home? And then 30 seconds later, <laughs> oh, and can my friends come over? And then 10 seconds later, oh, and do we have pizza at home? So he just waited. He was smart enough to wait to put them all in one message. He didn't need ice cream or pizza. It's I fine. Think, no. I think yeah. the, the time that he would be running on is a different timeline mm -hmm. than ours. They he have no concept of time. Skipping two seconds in his mind, and it's a month. Also right. could be really expensive to uh, text from heaven. That, <laughs> that could be that it. text plan Extra could be brutal. Charge. We just wait till we just Especially one text says it all. Especially like if that. everybody gets paid the same wage there, then it would oh, be like you know. good God. So this is uh so this kind of comes in. This is interesting. The topic, what happens when we leave here? Was this a question that you had posed to your father? Yes. So and we said, would do this all the time. Okay. We'd be like, do you think he can tell us about this? Or what do you think about this? What do you think he's doing? How's you know? Right. And so he would respond. And at so this time, be honest with me, doctor. Mm -hmm. Dr. Locks, be honest at like the season finale of season two of House of Cards. Are you like, Dad, do they get out of this? Don't lie to me, Dad. You know things. Did you ever ask those questions or were they uh, just the big questions? Uh, well, it was kind of a mix to tell you the truth because just I as knew much. <laughs> you watch it, man. What does season three look like? I got you. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, there, there are shows he, he really enjoyed in certain styles, you know, like James Mishner's Centennial. I don't know if sure. you're familiar with that. Yeah. You know, he really loved that. 
uh, requested that one. So, um, yeah. Oh, very cool. But uh, so this is a preview. So basically he was one of the original guys using your Netflix pass. Yeah, right? exactly. <laughs> yeah, but, but keep that kind of on the down low. Cause I don't want them charging me for that no. extra. Hey, prove it. Tell they them probably prove know it. now. Prove it. Right. <laughs> yeah. All right. So this was the message. You, you kind of posed the question, what happens when we leave here? Daughter, it's father. Funerals are sad for the living, but happy for those that have passed through the veil. Think of it as living in a large house and one person goes on to find a magical room filled with love, mercy, and tenderness. They pass through and look out at the other inhabitants of the house and feel their love buoying them up. That is why it's so important to always be your most loving self. All the love you give and garner, it goes with you when you pass and serves you well. You realize that all the money made means nothing in comparison with the love you gave and accepted. Imagine all the billionaires who pass to find that the poor shoemaker surpassed them on the other side. And that came on October 3rd, 2016. Very wise. Yeah. Very wise. Um, also says, don't forget to pick up some peanut butter on your way home. <laughs> right. Because it would yeah. make my wife happy. There you go. Right. <laughs> Obviously. Be your best self. Yeah. So wife. remarkable. You get these messages. You have mm -hmm. this conversation. What does this mean to you? How many more messages in total? I mean, we're not going to go through them all, but those were the four big ones that she sent over to us. How many messages did you get? Oh, geez. Hundreds. If this is over a five-year span. Wow. And it progressed from one a month to having just instant communication. And we mm -hmm. always compared it to, this is like he's on a business trip and he's in France and he's just texting back and we're, we're talking about stuff. And it was like so incredible. And, we, and all the time we're thinking, who's ever going to believe us? Who can we talk to about this? You know, because, because now he wants us to talk to everybody because we have to get everyone to realize what he's helped me realize. Cause he took me from being incredibly angry at him. Mm -hmm. Uh, to like being, I love my dad. And our relationship was, I, you know, he's very close yet very far away. And it's no different than if he was here in a physical sense. It's, it's that unique a journey. Well, Mr. Locks, my phone <laughs> number is 612-867-5309. And as for my secretary, Jenny, she'll put you right through to me. I'd love <laughs> to get a text from you. Uh, yeah. Boy, if my phone rings and I get a weird message from your dad, we're, yeah. I'm done. The show will be over for for good. But that <laughs> that's amazing. So you got hundreds mm -hmm. of messages, mm -hmm. and and you would get these insights and intel. Were there any messages that came through that seemed wonky? That seemed like, uh, maybe this one isn't dad. This might be somebody trying to to trick us. Or did they all just fall in that same suit? You know, there's we got one message that was a whole string of emojis. And when you put them together, they look like they tell a story, mm -hmm. but he never commented on it in terms of this is what he was doing, you know, because see, he, pro he progressed from texting words to also using emojis and he'd throw in these gifts and all these little videos that like, where do you even what? find? I don't even know where this is on the internet or my phone. How would he find this? Oh, well, and I can explain to you. It's the same thing happened when Greg found out how to send emojis. <laughs> I just kept getting eggplants and donuts and <laughs> weird stuff sent to me all the time. I'm like, Greg, peaches. Grow so up. many peaches. Yeah, peaches. <laughs> but like it, it was just strings and strings of emojis. And I thought, I don't know if that was him. You know, and I want to I want to post that as well and ask people what story would you put together here? Oh, you should send it to me. I have they teenage would. daughters; they could yep. read. They'll decode it in an instant. It's like hieroglyphs. <laughs> My yeah, daughter yeah, is exactly. a set of stone of emojis. She'll tell you exactly what was meant to be said. <laughs> and that the other side called. loves to talk in metaphors, so it's perfect for their emojis. Are perfect for them. Are right. you kidding me? Right. Are right. you still getting those messages today, Doctor Lox? No, not from the phone. And so, you know, it's. What did he move to Etch a Sketch? It, what do you mean? No, not from he, the phone? He, it's like uh, the day Laura died is like the day he also left. And oh. about a week before she passed away, he sent this email and it was like a, 
like the kind of email uh, text you would send your kid going off to college or something, you know, to say, you know, be careful if you're up on the roof working on the house or, you know, remember to do this, do this. And, you know, it's, it's like, you know, we kind of knew it was close to the time and it's like, this is a farewell. And it's like, now I'm losing him again and now I'm losing her, but I still hear him in my head. So the communication I've, I've learned along the way, how to uh, quiet my mind and how to pay attention and listen and uh, to ask, you know, before I go to sleep at night, if you bring me a message, please do it right before I wake up. So I have a chance of remembering. Right. Otherwise it's really difficult. But, and then I have like, uh, I'll get like downloads where like, bam, it's just, it's in your head. It's like, you just know. And now out of curiosity, um, do those messages from your father that seem to come through so clearly in your head, do they come in moments when maybe you feel your wife near you? No, I think she communicates with me in a different way. Okay. The only reason I ask so. is if she was kind of that psychic conduit. Right. Right. That, that maybe when she stops in, dad can plug in again real quickly and right. make himself known. And I think about that too, because I think, okay, it was the two of us here on earth and him and another right. dimension, but now it's those two on that dimension. I'm the one here. So the equations flipped a little, but it seems like that should still make sense, right? Did he offer your wife words of wisdom about passing and what to expect? Just the one like you read previously, that early mm -hmm. one. Um, he has a couple ones down the road where he talks about different things about um, all religions, all faith are accepted. You know, uh, they really, uh, when, one year I sent him a happy birthday for his birthday because I never celebrated his birthday, you know. Him and Lincoln share a birthday, only not the same year, but mm -hmm. <laughs> the same date. And he said um, he had forgotten it was his birthday because they don't celebrate them there because if they right. did they'd be celebrating all the time and right. there is not much different from here because he he was like i have things to do i got work to do i also get weary you know they get tired of stuff what? and uh, i know they do they do they just they all they have jobs they have work they have to what? learn things oh, wow. oh, wow. You come in here all sweet and light and love and let me share messages from the other side and oh, oh, connecting with my dad. Oh, plus you got to work on the other side. There's and capitalism on the other side. No, yes, thank you. No. It's you like you have to, you're working to improve. So when you take another run at it, you can do a little bit better. Look how okay, what is the other Greg thing I can do then? Because I don't want to be here and I don't want to be there now. I don't, what do we do now? Star <laughs> Trek? Greg Look at know, Greg's he, face. He's just like, <laughs> he just keeps slumping uh, so, so, in the street. He's turning more and more purple. You got to start <laughs> exercising. So, so, <laughs> I, I got to work on that side too. <laughs> I know. it's like, It seems unfair, doesn't it? I but just yes. retired too, man. But yes. Like, but they, you have all this astral knowledge. That's, you know, he referenced that frequently. You know, mm -hmm. he's helping, you know, out of love. And he has all this astral knowledge to share because, what we do here at this kid's table we call Earth, it affects everything, everybody, because we're all connected. And we also affect the other dimensions with our bad behaviors and anger I'm going to be mad forever about jobs on the other <laughs> side. I'm not happy about right. it at all. Wow. Maybe you'll really love it. I got, you know. Maybe I'll hate it more. <laughs> I don't know. I'm not there. Uh huh. Amazing stuff. Yes, Greg, you had uh, a point to make. Probably not. You're yeah, right. I'm <laughs> sure of it. I am sure of it. Uh, Dr. Lox, thank you so, so much. And come back, share more stories with us and other strange paranormal experiences you've had. Would you do that for us? Oh, absolutely. And, you know, I'd love it if, you know, everything I have, I'm posting it up on uh, my website, Be The Railing. Okay. That's three different words. But also, he asked me if you could have a Twitter page. So I just, I know, but when no, you look at it, it doesn't exist, but it's like, Hi, it's like, you don't, with the Twitter page, I bet he can access that directly. <gasps> I bet he could. He wasn't just thinking, oh, I want a Twitter. Cause it's well, X, whatever. But it's like, 
it could be an easier energy pathway. Maybe. Yeah. But on my website, I've got a lot of stuff posted so people can read and uh, see stuff and check it out. And be the rail.com. Be the railing. B E. Be the railing. Yes. T H E railing. R A I L I N G. He picked, uh, he wanted that title. So <laughs> he wanted the website to be called yeah. Be the Railing. And I've got my first volume of the book finished. And so he's got a title for that. Awesome. Nice. Well, we'd love to hear more from you and uh, visit with you again in the future. And thank you so much, Dr. Locks, for being fun and allowing us to uh, to have some laughs. Although I do. <laughs> listen, I got to ask you before I let you go. Yeah. I got to ask you about the one the one comment, because it might be my favorite possible put down I've ever heard. OK, um, what is the one about the uh, where is it? Good golly. Um, how can we communicate? You know, you gave so many great notes in it's here. Uh, my favorite part of the show. <laughs> yeah, I get to read through these things. Um, but, but it was something about something about the the bad container. Uh, what was that? Oh, an unchipworthy container. Yeah, yeah what's that, that one? That's, oh my that's gosh! What well, my soul? Because yeah. you know, Laura, you know, it was uh, you know had it did not have the best container this go around. You know, she had asthma, some health issues, and then the cancer. And, you know, he died of pancreatic cancer. So I think he yeah. bonded with her with that too. But she got so mad at that, you know, and when she uh, was responding to me about it was like, why does he call my container unshipworthy? I am titanium, <laughs> you know, and because that was Are always her mindset to get through. Uh, Any chance treatment. maybe your wife was your reincarnated father? Oh, no. you know, that's hilarious because we had this conversation because we were talking about past lives and how you're related and what's the relationship now. And I said, you know, maybe you two were spouses in a past life. Oh my gosh. Oh my. He got on that phone right away. And it was like, I was never with your wife. You know, <laughs> it's like, no, my love is familial, you know, like family. No, but you guys were for sure connected in a past life. All three of you. For oh yeah. Sure. yeah. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. We yeah. know a lot of our circle. Greg, Greg stop Trish. it. Trish. All right, Dr. Locks, we're going to let you go before Greg melts down and ruins all the beauty that you've shared. Aside from the fact of letting us know there will be more work to do once oh. we pass on. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Thank you so hey, much for, for having us. me. We have got to take a quick break. When we come back, we will continue. We've got news and an upon further review with a very special guest. And that comes up next right here. On the best in paranormal programming, I'm Dave Schrader, and this is the Paranormal 60 News. Are you troubled by strange noises in the middle of the night? Do you experience feelings of dread in your basement or attic? Have you or your family ever seen a spook, specter, or ghost? Then Haunted Magazine Issue 41 might just be for you. In issue 41, we have The Enfield Haunting, an interview with Dave Schrader, Danny Robbins, and lots, lots more. Out now in stores, app stores, and online at bit.ly forward slash haunted magazine. Remember, don't be normal, be paranormal. Hey friends, you can now catch the Paranormal 60 wherever you listen to your favorite podcasts. And now you get access to the entire Paranormal 60 podcast network. All the great shows that we have to offer. Mondays, you get New England Legends with Jeff and Ray. Tuesdays, the Paranormal 60. Wednesdays, you get Monsters Lounge with Jenny and Tressa. Thursdays, you get the Paranormal 60 News. And Fridays, we go to the land down under with our friends, Ann and Renata, as they bring us true hauntings podcast and now joining the network every saturday and then sunday audio release you'll be able to hear mysteries mayhem and merlot with winnie schrader so make sure you check out the website for updates and information stop by the paranormal 60 swag shop to get all your favorite pieces from the big stupid cups to t-shirts hats coasters sweatshirts and more all your favorite stuff right there under one tab. And you can also find my new book and my old book. You can get a pair of books for one great price. 
All of that and even more is right there at paranormal60.com. All right, friends, we are back now. And it is time to summon another friend to join us. Because I think we need to take a look at a movie. So, ladies and gentlemen, all the way from Wednesday nights, this is the Monsters Lounge, Jenny Monroe. Wow. Hi, Hi everybody. Oh. Hi, guys. My favorite. Look at my yeah, great wife. Yeah, to see her. And mm. you, uh, Tressa. So, I said, I said... I would like to task you with checking out a movie. Uh, and just to remind people, you can hear more about the Monsters Lounge live Tuesdays at 9 p.m. Central on Facebook and YouTube. You can hear their shows Wednesdays right here on the audio version of the Paranormal 60 podcast. And I said, ladies, you like movies. You should go see You'll <laughs> Never Find Me. And you guys said, do we have to? <laughs> yeah, mm -hmm. we don't want you to do that. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I thought it was pretty, pretty rude because when I tell Greg, Greg, I want you to watch a movie, I already know he's not going to do it and I don't have to take any lip from him. He just <laughs> automatically lies to me and says, I will right. no, no, I'm, 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 you know, my. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, well, exactly. and well spoken too. Well. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time now for Upon Further Review. Now, prior to me sending you to see this movie, Jenny Monroe, had you ever heard of You'll Never Find Me? Actually, I have. Um, I'm uh, an avid horror movie watcher, so I had been checking out previews, and I, and I saw this one, and so it was already on my list. Sweet tea. Was mm. this one that made you tighten up and cringe a little bit when I told you to check oh. it out, especially because it's Australian? Oh. Listen, uh, no, I had no idea what it was. I was just like, I don't want to know anything. Let me just watch it. All right. Well, let's give everybody a little taste of what you guys got a chance to see. I'm sorry. The weather has gone crazy up there. Is it okay if I use your phone? I have to admit, this thunderstorm is strange. What made you come here? I don't know, I just ran. I'd really need a lift into town. I'll take you there when the weather lets up. Do you get lonely all the way out here? Hiding. Hiding? We're all just out running something. You've never been here before. You have a familiar face. I should probably get out of your way. I don't think you can. I'm just messing with you. <laughs> Did you tell someone you were coming here? <laughs> what? Are you actually doing here tonight? <laughs> you invite yourself into my life and then act like I dragged you here. Sometimes it's like we're drawn to unhappy endings. Like a population of fucking moths. All right. Looks interesting. And I think my favorite part of the entire trailer is I don't know what's going on. I don't feel yeah. like he gave mm -hmm. anything away to me because I don't know who the bad guy or bad girl is in this entire movie. Nope. Talk to me. Don't, I don't again, we don't want the full rundown. No, 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 no. But, but right. give me some insight into this flick. A good three fourths of this movie, you have absolutely no, no idea, idea what's, what's going, going on. on. Yeah. It was slow in the best way possible. This it movie really, was great. Really was. Yeah, I, so I really enjoyed it. Shutter's been doing like a lot of really good originals. I mean, they they miss the mark sometimes, but I like Shutter a lot just because it's it's a huge amount of titles, right? And 
Australian films lately, like their horror genre is really good. We've been getting some good ones. And this one was so, so creepy and so suspenseful for the, yeah. for, yeah, the first three fourths of the movie. Now, is this, would you call this a horror movie or is this kind of a, in the, in the vein of uh, Silence of the Lambs, more of a psychological thriller? I'd say horror because you definitely get into into some spooky stuff towards the end. It's not quite in the same where you're just thinking about it. And mm -hmm. in, yeah, it's not quite the same. Yeah, it definitely is a, a majority psychological thriller, mm -hmm. but it gets into horror for sure. Yeah. All right. So on a scale of one phantom, it sucks. Five phantoms. It's amazing. Where would you put this movie? I'm going to go with a solid uh, three and three quarters phantoms. Yeah, okay. it's almost a four. I yeah, felt it, the exact same way. It's it's just almost a four, but they make some choices mm -hmm. at the mm -hmm. end that I go, oh, all right. Yep. That is I'm funny, gonna... isn't it? That horror movies sometimes are so good. Like the original It, I don't know if you guys remember, it was oh, a made-for-TV yeah. movie series. I can't watch it now. It's so cringeworthy to re-watch it, and the acting is so bad. But at the time, it was so good until the last 10 minutes. Spoiler alert, when they're just kicking to death like a large glowing spider. Mm -hmm. I was like, wow, this, what a an You're abysmal right. ending. <laughs> yeah. I can tell you this. Dr. Uh, Locks's father was not sitting there going, I can't wait for the sequel. <laughs> he wasn't texting his daughter about that. Oh, you don't believe me? Dr. Locks, would your father have wanted to see that sequel? I, I can't really speak for him on that. It didn't seem to have what he really looked for in shows. All right. So then yeah. you agree. No Kevin Spacey. Yes. I got it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'm with you. All right. So uh, you both give it around three and three quarters phantoms. Mm -hmm. yeah. It was really lot. worth a watch. It yeah. was great. I didn't care for a lot of the stuff in the ending, but I, I thought it was a really fun watch up until then. Yeah. Have you have you seen that movie, Greg? I have not. Are you going to watch it now that they, they've yeah, given it three and three quarters? I don't think so. Yeah, I love that he goes. Yeah, probably not. <laughs> so many confusing messages. Head's telling me no. He says yeah, probably not. I, I can't you know, understand. When, when you live it, I mean, what's the point of I, watching the movie? You're not Australian. Yeah, what are you talking about? Do you, you live, live in a trailer? Do you live in a trailer? Is there? Shh, that's we don't talk about that. Can oh, you not tell by the wood paneling? No. Oh my uh, God, I loved I'm that trailer. So that whole thing, because it looks like it's a period piece for a long time until they start talking about cell phones. And you're like, no, it just lives in a terrible place. And I yeah. love it. It's gorgeous. Yeah. I, you know, there's something nice about a tiny little home where you can walk blue, five feet. Blue tarps are my favorite. <laughs> <laughs> we know. <laughs> You'll never find me a Shutter original. Is that where you guys watched it on Shutter, or did you mm -hmm, go find it in a theater? No, on Shutter. Ah, uh -huh. you know why you couldn't find it in the theater? Because mm. you'll never find me. He warned you right, <laughs> uh, right in the title of the movie. Uh, Not there for that. Yeah. Got me there, yeah. Schrader. Very good. Well, I'm glad that you could uh, take that time. And do you feel honestly? Is it time you wish you had back? Or no, no. it was great. Mm -mm. Right. It was a good. It was a good watch. I feel good. Mm -hmm. I feel good for yeah. Shutter about this movie. Yeah, good for you, Shutter. Yeah, good, good for, you. for you. High five. You deserve this. You do. We've got news. <laughs> Again, big breaking news. No rapture. What? No Wait. rapture today. Uh, nope. You, no rapture. Mm, are those nope. people just ignoring me then? Because I've yeah. been calling people. Uh, yeah. and, While you were on the highway, did cars just drive past you with nobody in them and then careen off the highway? That's yes, the rapture. Every, baby. Uh, yeah, yeah, every day. Yeah. Every, <laughs> hey, <laughs> God, where do you live? I mean, I swerve a lot, so that yeah. might be my fault. Yeah, that's crazy. You see me drive. Oh, uh, yeah, you know, I, I have. <laughs> I have. And it's absolutely, utterly terrifying. All right, that I see. Signs are negotiable. Thank ne you. It's a suggestion. <laughs> All right, let's get to it. Do you want to hang in with us, Jenny, for yeah. some news, or do you got to go? Because the, no, I'm the, P60, the P60 is now P64. Greg, you got to go. You got a, <laughs> got a thing to do? Bye, Greg. Bye, Greg. See you later. No. Hey, I'm I do kidding. want to take just a few seconds and acknowledge Paranormal Pixie. 
best guest yet. She loved mm-hmm. you, Jenny. No, she loved Dr. <laughs> Locks. No. Uh, she dropped five bucks on us as a little donation to the cause. And then uh, Deb from SAC dropped 10 bucks, said, looking forward to Winnie tonight on Spaced Out Radio. That's right. For those of you that are fans of Dave Scott and Spaced Out Radio, tonight he has Winifred Schrader as his special guest. And if you'd like to know more about Dave Scott and behind the scenes, you could check out Monsters Lounge from just a few Ooh. weeks ago. They had him as a guest. Roles were reversed. That's Thank true. you very much mm-hmm. to both of you for the donations to the cause You're and welcome. for uh, being a part of it. Yeah, thank you. We appreciate it. Uh, <laughs> super likes, super love stickers. They're all on. Feel free to open that wallet and just throw stupid money at us. It's it's probably best you did that anyway. All right, <laughs> yeah. let's get to this. We've got stories to share. What are you on the other side with your capitalist society and your jobs? No, you're here. Have fun you're with here. it. Come have on. Have fun. Right. <laughs> I'm just delighted that you're going to have to work in the afterlife too. Shut up. I hate God, you. That's the worst. <laughs> oh my God. Let's unveil the mysteries. Can you kill Mr. yourself Mr. twice? Wood. Stop. <laughs> You just did. Both careers gone. <laughs> Unveiling the mysteries of Wistman's Wood. Now you can forget those tropical rainforests that the UK boasts its own hidden gems, just like this one, Dartmoor National Park. It's Wistman's Wood in Devon. Nestled in the Dartmoor National Park, this ancient woodland offers more than just meets the eye. <laughs> Sorry, picture, if you will, folks, gnarled oaks, granite boulders, and wildflowers creating an otherworldly landscape straight out of a fantasy novel. But as the sun sets, tales of ghostly apparitions and bloodthirsty hellhounds engage. Legend has it that there's an angry pack of bloodthirsty hellhounds who hunt across the moors at night, searching for lost souls and explorers who've lost their way. Legend has it that these ancient trees guard the gates to the underworld, and woe to those who dare to disturb them. Woe to those. Do you think Dr. Locks's dad wrote this line? Yep. <laughs> Fancy. Woe to those. <laughs> yes. Wow. So these check out these trippy trees. Tell me that does not look like it is definitely Fake. like David Bowie's going to come crawling out of him with a Ooh. ball in his hand or something. Yeah, Be all labyrinth on us. Yeah. What? Oh. Either that or Robin Hood. Yeah. Mm. Prob- well, no, he didn't have magical forests. He just had a hot in forest. Yeah. Mm. What, he yeah. had anything to do with Anyway, these trees mm. are said to guard the gates to the underworld and woe to those who dare disturb them. Popular tales tell of the story of a man who attempted to cut down one of these ancient trees but the oaks got their revenge, curling their roots around the man, crushing him to death. And it's said that his cries can still be heard at night. Some visitors report chilling encounters with a spectral ghost dog or eerie whispers in the wind. Listen to the Paranormal 60. <laughs> or Monsters Lounge with nothing else to do. You gotta work on your theater whisper. It's really but bad. I think it works much better than you think it does. I don't you know. just want to be I hurtful. Really hear what you're saying. How is despite it so its despite its spooky <laughs> reputation, Wistman's Woods draws adventurers seeking a glimpse of its mystical allure. With roots dating back to 7000 BCE, it's steeped in history and mystery. But tread carefully, friends. Dartmoor's weather can be as unpredictable as its legends. And remember. In this sacred space, every footstep matters. Respect the land, and perhaps you'll unlock its secrets or become part of its haunting lore. <laughs> How's my uh, theater laugh? Is that really one good? That was really that scared good. Scared me a lot. Oh, Very scary. Yeah. yeah, I want Greg, to go still... to that place. Greg, is this on? Can well done. Me? That's what, that was well done. <laughs> That's a place I'd like to visit. Yeah. Greg, you know? Oh, it's thanks. beautiful. Yeah. Even the what, indoor was it, kid? Was mm-hmm. it Scotland? Was was the place called the Waverly in Scotland, that, that forest that we visited, Greg? Do you remember that? I don't remember that. Oh, it was gorgeous. It was magical. It was so gorgeous. Mm-hmm. I've and I'm not an outdoorsy kind of guy. No. And it was like I would come back here. Mm. It's a good place to hide a body. Uh, it was beautiful. Mm, there it yeah. is. Well, apparently, you just have to push them into a tree in this one. 
Yeah. 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 The they were magical. No, it was beautiful. It really was. It did look like this this place in Scotland called the Waverly, I believe it was. Or the man, was it the Waverly or the Heritage Hermitage? You got me. Anyway, man. one of those uh, magical places. Sense? Yeah, we're just uh, it's the point of the show when I'm just gonna go to guttural noises. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm pretty much like three quarters of the manual. way through here. I'm three and three quarters <laughs> way through here. Hey, and it's That's a big dumb part. cup, not a big stupid cup. <laughs> no, mine's a big stupid cup. Look at it. It's delicious and good. It's People love it. I've been getting, send me photographs of you drinking from your big stupid paranormal oh, 60 I like that. mug. Yeah, I want to see them. We'll gonna, do a cap cut. It'll be we'll, cute. We'll feature. I don't even know what that means. Uh, we'll feature them right here on the program. You send me those pictures to Dave at paranormal60.com. Look at Greg. Why does he look like Beaker? <laughs> oh, Beaker. Uh, now or uh, usually? Yes, always. Um, <laughs> yeah. How you impress ladies? Hey, how Is you doing? That how? Is that oh, how you impress ladies? That gets oh, me every God. time. Hello. Miss Firejack throws five bucks at us saying, you guys are awesome. Glad I got to meet Dave and Greg last year. Hugs to all. Mm -hmm. Oh, thank you. We appreciate that. That's that's kindness. Look at that. Just pulling in the cash tonight. <laughs> and uh, let's get to our next story. This is this one's pretty good, too. I, I like these tales. Is this, is this an email? No, no, it's not an email. It's a news story. I don't know if you're oh. familiar with the show, Greg. It's news related. OK, he's like 10 sheets in. Yeah, he's yeah, How many 10 glasses sheets. Is he drinking out of? I'm not Sorry. doing this anymore, though. I'm not. I can't do all that. Don't lie. In the eerie expanse of southern Israel's Elliot region lies a chilling discovery, a collection of objects believed to be the remnants of magical rituals. Performed by sorcerers nearly 400 years ago. Where on, on Earth, the map is it? I'm it, <laughs> pointing it out right there for you. Yeah, I don't it. see it. Where is it? Ah. Uh, Unearthed in the 1990s, near the Darb al-Haji al-Masri pilgrimage road, these artifacts paint a picture of occult practices intertwined with the journey to Mecca. Stretching from Cairo to Mecca, this road once saw the footsteps of pilgrims seeking spiritual enlightenment. Yet, among the relics of campsites, one site, Netafim II, holds a bit of a darker secret. Clay rattles. Yeah, you heard me. Clay rattles, incense burners, figurines, seashells, and colored quartz pebbles. This doesn't sound like a sorcerer. It just sounds like some doped up hippie living yep. in the woods. <laughs> I'm being honest with you. No, I mean, those are pretty it. rocks, but yeah. No, sorcerers use that stuff. Oh, do they? Tell us yeah. more, Greg. <laughs> they use them for a macabre ensemble, hinting at ancient sorcery. Or nerds. Look at <laughs> that's my doll, yeah. and these are my rocks. <laughs> I'm nice just doll. saying, it's the way you look at things, I uh -huh. guess. Uh huh. Some want to see ancient sorcery. I see a guy that plays Dungeons and Dragons a lot. <laughs> and bad at making lot. dolls. Really well, bad. He has boobs, so he knew what he was doing. It's an action <laughs> figure, it's not a doll. <laughs> <laughs> Analysis reveals the clay origins in Egypt, suggesting a link to the Ottoman Empire's reach into the region. These artifacts, shattered and scattered, bear witness to rituals intended to ward off evil or women. <laughs> I'm just saying. Again, nice. it looks like it looks like. Hey, Greg, you want to come over and uh, I'm going to put on my dungeon master robe and <laughs> walk you through it. A challenging journey. Wow, you're really good at that. Yeah, look at yeah. it. I've even brought my clay rattle of boobs. <laughs> Why do you sound slightly like Harry Carey there, too? <laughs> Holy cow. Hey, look at ah, put my rocks down, Greg. Holy cow. Yeah, here's some other pieces. I don't yeah. even. I don't oh, know. Yeah, that was. Somebody <laughs> thought through that one. Yeah, they did. I, yeah. Some of these were I intended to ward it. off evil and cure ailments, a testament to a parallel world of superstition lurking beneath the surface. The identity wow. of the sorcerers remains shrouded in mystery. Shrouded, my mm. friends. That's right. The identity of these sorcerers. <laughs> <gasps> you know Wait what? a minute. Shrouded. That's the nerd? In he can make 
he can make fire come out of his hand and he can't their heal practices the lost to time. <laughs> Were they lone practitioners or part of a clandestine network like the Paranormal 60 podcast network? The answers lie buried within the sands of history waiting to be unearthed by those brave enough to delve into the supernatural realms of the past. Yeah. There Heal you go. thy eyes. Or Soak it in. <laughs> Soak it in. You know. I took like five screenshots of that, by the way. I hope you did. <laughs> I'll just posters. send it to you. I'll even sign it and send it over to you, Jenny. There's no reason that you should just have to keep that to yourself. Uh, mm. Speaking of keeping it to yourself, something exciting coming up this year in Oregon. The Oregon like Bigfoot Festival and Beyond is back and bigger than ever. At Oaks Amusement Park, Saturday, June 29th. Meet Bigfoot hunters like Ronnie LeBlanc of Discovery Channel's Expedition Bigfoot and Paranormal Caught on Camera. And paranormal investigators like me, Dave Schrader of The Holzer Files and the Paranormal 60 Podcast. Join us for a day of family fun celebrating Bigfoot, ghosts, UFOs, and everything beyond. You never know what you'll find. Don't miss the Oregon Bigfoot Festival and Beyond, Saturday, June 29th at Oaks Amusement Park. Get tickets today at OregonBigfootFest.com. OregonBigfootFest.com. The Oregon Bigfoot Festival. Oregon Bigfoot Festival. And make sure to stop by the Paranormal 60 Swag Shop and get your Bigfoot gear. You can get your coffee mugs. You can get your wallets. You can get your T-shirts, your baby outfits, whatever you're into. We've got it. Go check it out at the Paranormal 60 swagshop.com. You guys you know are so is... excited for that. <laughs> yeah, because you know who else is going to be at that Oregon Bigfoot Festival? Uh, Monsters Greg? Lounge. Greg, are you uh -huh. going to no. be there? No, no, he's not. Yes, it's yeah. Jenny and me. But Hi, girl. Wait, hey, nobody told me it was... That's Monsters yeah. Love. Will you be wearing hey. those outfits in order? Yes. will be. And yep. trying to mimic that if, pose. Trying to figure out what <laughs> that, that's the Monsters Lounge. Yeah, that is the Monsters Lounge. Nobody told me this is going to be outside. I did not know this was going to be outside. Yes, you I did. Thought, yes, no, you I did, did not. Yes, you did. No, because we're you're not. Or you will be in the. You will be with a great sorcerer <laughs> that can help you through. <laughs> Those Another indoor kid. His magical C and I glasses he's wearing. You That's guys, Tress right. is going to come camping. Yeah, it's going to be amazing. I'm looking forward. Are you guys really coming to that? Yeah. Yes, we're yeah, going no. to be camping a week later. So we were like, yeah, let's do that then mm -hmm. too. Mm -hmm. I got too excited about that. That's Sorry. like two yeah. weeks without Tress on the show, Greg. Are you excited? <laughs> Who said that? I'll have a computer. Yeah, yeah. In the woods? What are you going to plug into the internet? Bigfoot's internet? Hey. Yeah, he's got portals. What are you talking about? He does. Hey, I have hey. done a podcast from uh, Devil's Lake his, his portal. in Wisconsin. Do you hear what I got to put up with, Dr. Lux? Can you <laughs> believe this? It sounds like you're a pretty lucky man. <gasps> oh, <laughs> nailed it. Thank you. Bigfoot portals she keeps bringing up. Good God. Woman just won't leave. She just sits in the back watching, eating popcorn. Well, that's because we're great. For a text from her dad right now, and he's like, "Change the channel. Change it. <laughs> can hear him texting. This right sucks. Now. Is there something <laughs> else on? Let's check out right. this monsters lounge thing. That sounds we only interesting. Have, yeah, we have uh, we have one more story with pictures, and then just one I get to read. It. Yay, pictures! What, Greg? Email. <laughs> No, no, email. no emails. All right, here we go. Uh, in the desolate caves of Nevada lies a startling yeah. discovery. Remnants of giants measuring up to a staggering 10 feet tall. Mythology and folklore have long whispered tales of these colossal beings. And now evidence emerges to validate these ancient claims. I don't know if you guys heard about this. Giants right here in Nevada. According to the Paiute legends, the Siteka cannibalistic giants with fiery red hair once terrorized southwestern America. Their origins shrouded in mystery. They arrived on reed rafts from a distant island, towering over ordinary men with their immense strength and cruelty. Now in 1911, got to set back the clocks, right around the time Greg was born, 
Miners stumbled upon bizarre artifacts while excavating bat guano near Lovelock, Nevada. <laughs> it's a thing, man. You make money. Is it? Yeah. Hey, Greg, what you doing on Saturday? I was going to go out and harvest me some bat poop. You want to come with? <laughs> Didn't they use sure explosives? The spot on Nevada I accent, so. too. You live yeah, in the desert. Perfect. What are you gonna? How are you gonna heat your food up without? If you're living in the desert without guano, uh, I don't know. Well, that. No, 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 no. I don't think barbecue that's your can, you know your camel. I don't want my food to taste like. Yeah, I'm pretty guano. sure it's camels, really toxic. Uh, camel, hey, hey, camels are not from Nevada. Uh, unless they come in a pack right here in Nevada. I think I think you're gonna get some emails on that, Dave. I'm just sorry. <laughs> See, yeah. Did you did you retire or were you asked to step down? <laughs> knowledge. Where are you? Yeah, what's you need up? To know the truth, Greg. <laughs> yeah, wait, what? <laughs> Officer huh? Lawson thinks camels come from Nevada. <laughs> <laughs> Haven't you ever maybe. heard of the wild yeah, you're, herds you're getting, of camels? You're getting a little bit of a surprise, Dave. <laughs> All right, maybe. Reports in 1911, miners stumbled upon bizarre artifacts while excavating bat guano near Lovelock, Nevada. Subsequent expeditions in 1912 and 24 unearthed mummified giants dubbed the Lovelock Giants, along with 15 inch sandals and a boulder bearing giant handprints. Oh, yeah. Reports what? from 1931 detail the discovery of two more giant skeletons mummified akin to ancient Egyptians, further fueling the legend. Similar accounts stretch across the Americas with Spanish conquistadors documenting Peruvian tales of seafaring giants mm -hmm. and along with skulls found high in the Andes. That's right. Debate rages among scientists over the origins of these enigmatic beings, some attribute the red hair to environmental factors, while others see it as confirmation of the Siteka's existence. But how did these formidable giants meet their end? According to Paiute lore, neighboring tribes united against the Siteka, driving them into the Lovelock Cave. A final showdown ensued, ending in fire and suffocation, leaving behind only echoes of a forgotten race. As the embers of mystery smolder in Nevada caves, the legend of giants continues to captivate, inviting <laughs> great souls to delve deeper into the shadows of our past. Is that, uh, is that uh, you delving deeper into the shadows of your past right there, hey, Greg? That's 1987. I still have those genes. That's, that answered the question. Hey, I don't want to brag, but I can still fit <laughs> into the things. sandals I wore in eighth grade. So I don't know that that's any big I still news. own many articles of clothing that I cannot fit into, but I still own them. Yeah. Hmm. I just want to leave that story up there. That picture for this next story. Alien contact, a delicate balance. In, are they from Uranus? <laughs> Not for mine, but apparently from Greg's. Uh-huh. He's trying to pick his friends. <laughs> Speculation about extraterrestrial contact is on the rise, fueled by recent reports of unidentified aerial phenomena and whispers of government secrecy. In 2023, an indigenous studies working group added a unique perspective to the conversation. Drawing from history and ethics, they caution against rushing into first contact. <laughs> what are you... I don't... What I'm, I'm just imagining the picture of Greg dicking at his own ass <laughs> as they are warning against it mind jumping it? in. Yeah, uh, drawing from history and ethics, they caution against just rushing into first contact <laughs> unprepared. Where did Greg you get did not have that problem. Where did you Greg's get like, hey, me? howdy, y'all. Welcome to Earth. <laughs> I love that picture, Greg. That might be on my Christmas card this year. I'm not sure. I was, I was searching for answers, Dave. Oh, I don't. <laughs> that explains a lot, actually. Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. Oh, oh yeah. Even within scientific. A... Oh, wait. The group emphasizes <laughs> the importance of diverse viewpoints in discussing the ethics of seeking See? alien life. See? Like Greg, seeking alien life. <laughs> they urge a broadened definition of intelligence and life. Framing contact is a process rather than a single event, with various players involved. From the military to corporations, concerns arise about the profit motives over shattering. Shattering? Oh, <laughs> oh yeah. pardon me. Sorry. It's... 
It's all over. Uh, mm. Yeah. Uh, getting a little dry. Words is hard. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Uh, um. All right. With various players involved from the military to corporations, concerns arise about profit motives overshadowing ethical considerations. In Even America? Uh huh. Uh huh. <laughs> what? That Even doesn't make any sense. Even within scientific circles, opinions diverge. While some, like SETI's Jill Tarter, oh, yeah, view Jill. listening for extraterrestrial signals as harmless. Hmm. Others warn of potential parallels to historical colonial encounters. Preparing for contact means considering practicalities, from linguistic barriers to microbial threats. So I can say linguistic barriers yeah. and microbial yeah, threats, really but I well. stumbled over overshadowing. Listen, mm -hmm. the words is hard. It's over <laughs> overconfident in the, the mm -hmm. words that you use every day. Yep. Yeah, that is what it is, isn't it? He's the working group underscores the need to separate scientific exploration from corporate and military interests. Without this distinction, they fear history may repeat itself with colonization and exploration at the forefront <laughs> or, the, or the back door. Where did you give that picture of me? I don't even remember who took that picture. You don't posted it on it. Facebook. Wow, is that what it was? <laughs> yep. yeah. it was on your it was on your it was on your retirement day Facebook, and I'm like, this is a gem. I'm keeping this forever. Obviously, obviously I made a mistake. Yeah. Without uh, this distinction, they fear history may repeat itself. With colonization and exploration at the forefront, in the quest for cosmic connection, they advocate for cautious steps and a keen awareness of the ethical tightrope that we tread. So that's it. Tightrope. Mm -hmm. So, do you would anybody think like to see a, a high definition photograph of what? I, I, you know what? Greg's... I'm going to need it for my backgrounds. <laughs> yeah. And I got to go to the hospital. <laughs> Why? The thing's like dilated. <laughs> you're violated? Well, you're the one violated. Dilated. Dilated, dilated is the word. Yeah. <laughs> there the there. I'm ready to, ready to go. What do you uh, so? What do you make of this? Oh, we got to worry about how we're going to make contact. What seriously? I mean, we joked around in the past, and I said, "Who would you send forth?" Dolly Parton was my choice, my number oh, one that's choice. Good choice. That's a really good who choice. doesn't love Dolly Parton? Everybody, she's just so charming and full of love yeah. and sweetness. Yeah. Um, you know, I think she would be our first point of contact. Certainly, yep. nobody in the political realm. No, no. Can you think of not. one. Could you imagine RFK Jr. being the first Blech. political person? It's all him. I just didn't want to say Biden or Trump because I get yelled at every time those names even come up. Wow. We don't um, need to, to go yeah. there. Mm -mm. Uh, yeah, yeah, let's go there. <laughs> mm -hmm. I do not want to go to there. Wow. Um, so, How do you know? How do you what know? Do you, what, Greg, if in your perfect world, they, they say aliens are coming and we're going to make that first contact how do you think it should go down? Should it be like a sit down? Should it be like a banquet? Should it be just like mano e aliano? How yeah. does that work? Yeah, if if it could work out with one on one first, I think would be a, a real uh, good start. Just for the simple fact that you start adding three, four, five more people in there, just the the message gets really diluted, and people have all kinds of agendas. But when you you know when you came up with Dolly Parton. Because mm -hmm. I was I was running in my head, you know, I was thinking about negotiators. I was thinking about all this, these yeah. very highly trained people that that's what they do for a living. I was like, no, man, no, we need a good human being, not a manipulator. Yeah. Yes. Exactly. Yeah. Let me propose also Jane this Goodall. Guy? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> that guy or Jane Goodall. Yeah. Yeah, Jane Goodall. Yeah. Yeah. Seriously though, yeah. I mean, um, yeah. Uh, the, the people that do it for a living sometimes uh, get really, really. Um, right. It's like being cocky it. about the words you know how to say and you stumble over those, but you right, get microbial like blah, blah, blah. And mm -hmm. you figure those words out. Um, Counterpoint. What if we uh, have someone that is kind of a jerk about it and have Neil deGrasse Tyson come in there just so they can have a little slap in the face? Like, hey, guess what? <laughs> you don't exist. I'm here. Yeah. Mm. You don't exist. The probability that you're actually here is one in one trillionth of a 15th percentile. Yeah. And Get then wrecked. the alien's oh, like, I, but I'm standing here. Are you? Because he does mm -hmm. make you feel like he would make you question your own existence oh, in a conversation. 100%. But I Could also you imagine hot like boxing with say... Neil deGrasse Tyson? Just getting like high as kites and talking to what? him. And by the end of the conversation, you would question everything you ever thought you knew about reality. 
and or if I you were really high or not. Or I could really see him yeah. say just, just turning around and going, yeah, no, I was wrong. I, I nah, quit. I'm going to go nah, drive a bus this, now. He doesn't have that vibe I at all. I feel like he would. <laughs> <laughs> that guy. We're sending yeah. that guy. Yeah. I, uh, <laughs> no switches here. No, no from here. the back. Yeah, uh, that I is a forward facing. Yep. I was in the eighth. I don't, I, I'm really kind of seriously. Uh, oh, Steve Jones wants you to know he loves you, sweet tea. Wait, uh, I don't know what that means, but uh, wait, yeah, um, wait. it would be, uh, it would be amazing. I, yeah, who would you send? You'd like to think, oh, yeah, let's send uh, scientific, let's do, I don't, you know, and then we do worry. Obviously, the microbial effect, I, I a should be more of a concern for them than for us. No, because um, they're yeah. smarter than us. They have their, they know, they've got their walls, their, and, and they get walls. here and they're like, here, here, we brought these blankets. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. They're yeah, smart. Like, oh, these blankets are amazing. These, oh, yeah, first of all, they're them. smarter than us. Yeah, they, that's what I'm saying. They like carve up cows and anal probe. It doesn't, I, we aliens to might us. just be hillbillies is what we're looking at. <laughs> right. That's what they want us to think. But in reality... Yes. Mm -hmm. That's some no. crazy technology right there. That's what you think that's like college hazing for aliens or like <laughs> oh for sure. Hey, yeah, oh, Med yeah. Dwarf Seven, we need you to go down. It's drunk. Promote college that students. dude and then carve up his cow. <laughs> Why? It's cow. I mean, I will, but that's right. You gotta gotta lead the uh, trail down another uh, another avenue. Is that what it is? Yep. Counter. You know, for a guy who's retired from being a cop, you still still talk like five zero. I'm a little oh, worried about a guy with Neil deGrasse Tyson. Yeah. Good God. Burn. Called out. Uh, well, that's it. We're at the 91, almost 92 oh. minute mark. Uh, oh, wait, I have a question, me. though. I have a question, uh -huh. though. You don't, really. Is there inflation on the other side? Like, is my rent going to go up? Am I am I going to have to worry about interest rates on the other side? Why do I have a job on the other side? I hate that I have it to have a job a on the other side. It could be a good job, though. It see what you've like done, Dr. Locks. Good. Do you see you've what you've done? You've broken my brain. Oh, and my I hate goodness. every part of it. Hey, I, I have an answer to this. <laughs> oh, do oh, tell. No. Think about it. It's like, a, oh, guess what? No, <laughs> oh. no go ahead. Guess what? I want to hear you. You know, people uh -huh. say, you know, when when I pass, I'll float into the bright cloud, and my family will be there, and I will spend an, an HR? eternity with my family. And and I'm just thinking, eh, it doesn't sound like a good idea. <laughs> no, no, for sure, I'm with you there, but I don't want to go to with work. Your whole family forever? No, no. We well, need. What think like, about what do you have to do in heaven? What you, if it's like we're watch these out? puppies that yeah, their, their yeah. owners aren't aren't passed yet, so You're you have to tired. watch them. You're going to be tired of Cheetos after a while. I we, don't think so. That sounds wrong. Human <laughs> beings, whether we're spiritual <laughs> or or just corporeal. Huh? Dear daughter Therese, whatever you do, don't go on the paranormal 60 ever again, or your father doth deem it so. Wow. You've broken I mean, my team. They're all shattered now. None of them know how to. They're going to be fighting existential crisis. All They're all worried about having jobs. Yes, <laughs> like, 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 here, there, like I'm everywhere. I'm free and I've made it this far without a job. <laughs> Now I gotta worry about it. Listen, uh, I'm telling you, it's gonna be a uh, ghost puppy terrible. wrangler. No, no, <laughs> yes, it's not. It's gonna be a delightful It's gonna be a ghost puppy like uh, like yeah, ghost pickup. puppies. <laughs> no. no. So oh many ghost God. puppies. <laughs> so many ghost puppies. That's it, ladies and gentlemen. Thank I'll be God. back with you Wednesday. We've got a special edition of the show. I'll be live at the haunted and historic Palmer House Hotel with the owner, Kelly Freeze. We'll be talking about the history. We'll be talking about some of the hauntings and more bizarre features that have taken place there. And I'll be doing a live EVP session, electronic <gasps> voice phenomena on site. So make sure you tune in. That's live this Wednesday at your only home for the very best in paranormal programming. I'm Dave Schrader. And I'm here with these people. <laughs> I'm this Tessa. is the Paranormal 60. <laughs>
geeks like me, with culture guides and ghosts and moves in UAB. You miss a word, you do a shot. It starts to snowball and we laugh a lot. It's just like drinking with your TV friends. I'll be best out before tonight's show ends. Dream that the aliens are taking me away. I'll go wake up this time I'm late on Saturday. It's Wednesday night and I'm alone. The paranormal 60s on. Traders on. Hachi and the Colonel and the Paranormal Detective all we traders got me and they all will be directed He's got protective bracelets and some crazy magic tricks Even Scully cannot save him from the boys of TV Traders Wednesday night, don't be alone. The paranormal 60s on. Now one day they might even put me on a show. There's a ghost in my mouth, but man, I live down there, I know. It's Wednesday night, don't be alone. The paranormal 60s on. Train.